Hello, welcome to The Long Road. My name is Chris Roberts. I'm here with Ruth Sterling, the new face of the Pumpkin Fest. <laughs> My first thought was the new face of the Pumpkin Fest. That makes me sound like a jack-o'-lantern, but it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> <coughs> the, um, we only got about five more weeks left. It's getting hot and heavy now. Mm. Um, the pressure's coming from all sides. Yep. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're in the game now. You know, it, there, was a, there was a practice phase, and now it's er every minute counts. Um, five and a half weeks, 40-some days. And, uh, you know, parts of the process we're a little behind on. For example, fundraising, because we didn't start until <coughs> August 4th till we were absolutely sure. sure. So we're a little behind on that. Um, I would have liked to have had that wrapped up by September 1st. But other things we're way ahead on and um, pretty excited, or well, actually we're very excited about the whole business. I always have to give a shout out to the city of Keene. The emergency and uh, public works people have just been incredibly patient and helpful in um, sort of teaching us how to run a pumpkin festival safely so that we can make it fun. It, it it's kind of like a military operation. There are so many moving parts that some of them you're not even thinking about. You have to have complete trust that other people will do their part. Mm -hmm. But if they don't do their part, everything can come crashing down pretty quick. I, we would never use a term like that, Chris, ever yeah. oh, in yeah, relation to the pumpkin, pumpkin festival. Fest, yeah. But uh, <coughs> the uh, protocol is very carefully coordinated, and, and we're trying to not only have this um, professional document that guides the process, but also work with professionals. So there's, there are many, many, many volunteers, but there are, there are also some aces, some um, ringers that we bring <laughs> in, like waste management. Those people really know what they're doing and are um, committed to this being the greenest pumpkin festival ever and uh, composting as many pumpkins as possible and recycling as much as possible and um, keeping the streets as clean as possible. It's just all, you know, so that's one aspect. We made a commitment to the cleanest, greenest festival ever. And so far, you know, with waste management and a bunch of other people's help, it's looking like we could pull that off. The, um, the last part of the show will be about 30 minutes of your um, news conference yep. that you had with the, you're going to tell the people, the individual? The, 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 the Highwood, Illinois yeah. Challengers. Yes. Um, I like to think of that as the mayor's press conference because I've said this before, but I would not have chosen a big challenge in my, I already had a big challenge uh, f f to, to, to run this festival this year. So another challenge wasn't in my, uh, you know, wish list, but the mayors, <laughs> as soon as they heard each other, they decided this would be really fun and really beneficial to both communities. And uh, one thing I said at that press conference is that these people have shown me, as if I didn't already know, how great Keene, New Hampshire is. They just love the way we run our pumpkin festival, the way the town is. They had a tour of the town mm -hmm. while they were here. They got lost on the way back to the airport, <laughs> and they sent me an email that said, we're lost and we want to come back to Keene. <laughs> They just, they loved it. They loved everything about the way this community um, behaves and looks and, and, the, and the festival in particular. When I was listening to the, the press conference, and the emphasize was over and over again. Hardwood gets it, Keene gets it. During August, I mean, during July, I, I drove around the country, I, over 13,000 miles, and I went to hundreds and hundreds of small towns. And, and small towns are about community. Mm. You go into a small town, they all have their festival day, they all have field, women's field hockey won in 1942. The, there is community, there is an involvement, and the Pumpkin Fest is just important to Keene as whether it's Rodeo Day or Blueberry Day to all different small towns around the United States. I agree, <laughs> it is important to Keene and what we're finding out is it's important to a lot of other people not uh, you know in Keene because we're right here and our front yards get a little messed up or you know whatever mm. that we're inconvenienced um, for sure so 
So we don't always know what it's like to an outsider to come here and see the spectacle of our towers and those racks of pumpkins with incredibly artistic carvings and things. And these people from Highwood were, were so impressed with all of that. We have a very artistic region and the, the, our pumpkin <coughs> festival is particularly creative and artistic, but uh, it's all I get emails from all over the world saying, thank goodness the Pumpkin Festival is back because we're going to come this year, you know, coming from New Jersey to celebrate their eighth wedding anniversary because they got married at the Pumpkin Festival the first time. Just these, the, this um, attachment, this fondness that people have for our region outside the region is almost bigger than how we feel about it ourselves. It's, it's almost like our gift to the world that... Um, we put we it's it's an exhausting process as any volunteer knows but we are making memories for people all over the world it's beautiful and so that's what happened to this fellow Eric Falberg he came as he said at that press conference and then went back to his town outside of Chicago in Illinois and told them you should see this cool thing and and now they have one but it's not exactly the same as ours they, it's over four days for example yeah. they have a lot of um, they carve while they have cocktails. Now there's something we don't do in Keene. Uh, it's a really different atmosphere, but the essence, the reason they're carving to, um, you know, to let their light shine is, is the same. And it's really, it's, it was compelling. I really was fond of those two people. They were, the mayor's name, Charlie Picaro, and our mayor was wonderful. Yep. He was just so gracious. And please may we win. I mean, <laughs> I'm not supposed to care if we win or not, but you know, I've said this, I'm just not a good loser. And if somebody wants to make the challenge, then I really, I don't want to lose it. I don't mind tying, but um, they're the upstarts, you know, and they have copied us with great admiration and we can be really proud, but come on, one pumpkin <laughs> per person. I'll be mad if anybody carves more than one, but I'll be mad if they don't carve oh, one. Baby. So if... <clears throat> If, you know, 40,000 of us carve one pumpkin. You won? You set the record? Th we win a lot of things. We win the goal of uh, full participation, which was my first goal that we set f as coming in as the new organizers is full participation, that it's not for spectators, that it's not for people to um, talk about or, yeah, I used to go or, you, you know, watch it on Channel 8. <laughs> it's okay to watch it on Channel 8 as long as you get up off the couch and come down and, and experience it in person because um, I, I really hope that people will experience it. And we're working hard to make it accessible. When you're talking about Channel 8, this, I think this is like my 55th or 56th show. Oh, congratulations. But I'll have to tell you, the best two shows that I had was at last year's Pumpkin Fest. Wow. Everything was off the cuff just going in and talking to the people. I still remember the kids, the, the little girl saying her brother was bad and sneaky. <laughs> the, <clears throat> the gentleman from Connecticut who says he, he blocks out this pot every year to bring his grandkids to the pumpkin fest. He says, if there is no, he was asking me, is this going to be the last one? He says, if it's the last one, I'm never coming back to Keene. And so, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's really important the, the parade, watching the kids in the parade. This is a truly community event, not just for the participants, but this helps a lot of people. This isn't just about putting people in hotel rooms or selling more pizza or more ice cream. Who are some of the other people that are gonna benefit from the, the Pumpkin Fest? I, I think that the um <coughs> I think what you're probably wanting me to talk about is the social service yes. agencies, uh, the nonprofits, and the really good causes that all have found a way to um, work their budget out of the Pumpkin mm. Festival. And I, I brought a list of the nonprofit food vendors so that I wouldn't forget uh, to name people, but it's everything from arts groups like um, the Peterborough Children's Choir to uh, Anna Matero Women's Chorus, and let's see who's another arts group. Um, y you know, there's a, um, an effort to have a children's museum in Keene, and uh, that Cheshire Children's Museum group is coming, and they're offering cotton candy, popcorn, chocolate-covered pretzels, and, uh, you know, it, 
what they're doing is saying, okay, if we go there that day to Pumpkin Festival and serve our guests, we could maybe generate three, four thousand dollars and upwards. I mean, in the past, mm -hmm. it's been more than that uh, for to to help us build a children's museum or start a children's museum or. Um, buy uniforms for our baseball team. We have a number of baseball teams, a number of, um, of scouting troops, uh, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, fire departments, the Keene High School girls basketball boosters, let's see what they're doing, hot dogs, chili dogs, chili, uh, churches, the Keene Daycare Center, Knights of Columbus, Hin Hinsdale Fire Department, Surrey Village Charter School, and we do have, um, I think we still have two openings. So if I don't, depending on when you air, and I'm going to have a waiting list too because things happen. We had um, uh, United Way agencies sign up and at the last minute realize they just couldn't sure. get it together. This is not a lightweight duty. I mean, speaking of military, <laughs> yeah. it, it's a tough duty. You're su serving the minimum of 500 people that that the average nonprofit food vendor is going to be serving that day. So it, it's upwards from that, the lines. 99.5% um, will be really nice and courteous. Uh, There'll be that less than half of 1% that may tax you, especially if you've been there for a long day. So it's not an, it's not it's easy, not an easy money. You, you, have to, you have to work in it benefits. You know, that yeah. brings up a point. I was sitting here really quiet right before <laughs> you um, went on the air thinking about asking people to be kind. Um, this is a largely volunteer yeah. effort by a community that is not in the tourism business. We are a, um, a city yep. and uh, I own an ad agency and, and we do events, but we're not Disney. So when we put on a pumpkin festival, when Keene, New Hampshire puts on a pumpkin festival, we are really rallying all of our resources for that one day to pull this together, do it as beautifully as possible, help, hope everybody has as great a time as possible, and it would be really nice if everybody carried that spirit. There's, a, there's been some um, trouble in the past with people feeling entitled that this, this is their day and they had that spot before and you know and when I volunteer I do it from 11 to 1 and if you don't give me that time I won't do it at all and it's it's like really really that's that's your spirit because I thought it was we love this thing we got to make it happen we got to find a way to make it happen and you know we want to appreciate each other and we want to rally and you know be a team and get it together but but um, let's like drop the tude you know it, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and you're right because it, the pumpkin fest is going to have such a beneficial effect long over the year for a lot of the social agencies. Mm. A lot of the agencies that are not going to get funds from state or local are not even going to get funds from different companies because companies are falling on hard times. Right. And so really this is an opportunity to invite guests in your house and help them and while you're helping them to earn money to take care of your community the exactly. other 364 days. Beautifully put. That, that, is, I said, I'd have to look at that is exactly how I feel about <coughs> it. That it's a, a wonderful opportunity and there are certainly inconveniences and stresses but we're trying to manage those and plan those and systemize those. I'll give you an example. Um, in streamlining this festival, we've done all the registrations online. I, I said at the press conference, if you try to call me on the phone, you, you know, not a really good chance you're going to catch me because the, I'm either in meetings or I have, you know, we have other clients and all sorts of things. But, but if you email me, we've tried to run the festival as much online because if an email, you have a document yep. of the, um, uh, the transaction, if you will. But uh, so people register online, and then I know what day they registered, what they want to serve, you know, what their email is, uh, how many years they've been in the <coughs> festival. We have a way to contact them, and it's all done without any um, labor-intensive volunteers so that we can keep our volunteers fresh for the big day. And uh, the best way to help, if somebody wants to know how to help the Pumpkin Festival, it's to try to do all of their questions online, like to e if there if there is a question that's not answered on the website, which is pumpkinfestival2011.org, 
then um, try an email because people take a quick look and then call me. It's like <coughs> I, if I if I try to answer all those calls, we get eight thousand hits on the website in like a two week period. So that's that would be a lot of phone calls. The best way to help is to try to be self um, self sufficient. Self sufficient. But you know, don't go away without the yeah. answers you need. But if you could find them on the website, that would. And if you email me and tell me what needs to be on there, I can fix the website and answer the question for you know ten thousand people instead of trying to do it one on one. Because it's a big, big project with lots and lots of cool aspects, and we're trying to tighten up all of them and run them all professionally in one year. But like you said earlier, that you're not Disneyland, in you're trying to do it professionally, but you're not professionals, you're volunteers. And so no matter how hard you, you try and work, people have to realize that you and the other volunteers have a life, you have to make a living. And so yet yeah, you can't give 24 seven to this as you're at Disneyland. So that's what people need to be more appreciative of the time and effort that you and the countless other volunteers are putting in. Well, kindness is great. I, I just want you to know, I am, um, I am actually a, a paid event staff member. I have not yet been paid, <laughs> and I won't be paid if we don't make the budget numbers. But the way I um, took on this project was as a client of Sterling Design and Communications. So, um, twenty four seven is an exaggeration. Night and day <laughs> is not an exaggeration. We are working night and day to pull this together to the best of our ability and, and using all the input we get from from everyone and everywhere. People have been great. So I'm done whining about when people are mean <laughs> to me. It's just that Chris, the thing is people are very emotional. Oh, sure. They this is their festival. They have it's part of their life. It's been part of their life for twenty years. They have an expectation around it. And I'm coming in and saying, wouldn't it be great to have a food court? And they're saying, hey, I was right there for, you know, and, and we, we're just trying to work that out so that we're trying to do what's right for the most amount, most people. Do the what's best. Good. Yeah, the great, we're trying to do the greater good. And we're going to get about five or six minutes left, and I know some of the people, I've got my pumpkin color shirt yeah. on to, to match it, the tie, and I did it myself. Excellent. <laughs> So people are going to ask, what about this bowl and pin and pumpkin? Oh, oh yeah, what is that doing there? <laughs> okay, well, I brought this along today because I keep talking <coughs> about real bowling pins. I have 10 sets of 10 of these um, bowling pins that um, we got on eBay because when we talked about bowling, um, I'm so glad you brought up bowling because I would... All right, so what this is is there's going to be bowling on West Street after the parade goes through we're setting up bowling alleys and we can set up as many as 10 uh, and if if it's not a hit we won't set up 10 probably but um, all skill levels hoping little kids um, so okay so you're bowling across West Street there's a little bit of a rise in the middle of West Street and pumpkins aren't perfectly round but we did a test out at the Swamp Bats this summer and it was fun People who actually know how to bowl can really, we, oh, we used a, um, we used cantaloupes. It's not a real pumpkin. So. It's not a real pumpkin yet. No, yeah. they're coming though. Uh, but I need some help with bowling because um, we've gotten uh, uh, a person from the bowling league in Keene to take on the project and help advise about mm -hmm. it. Her name's Nancy Hickox, mm -hmm. and she's an old, old, old um, friend of mine. Not that Nancy's old, but we go <laughs> way back. You oh, three times. <laughs> well, just we go way yeah. back, and I happened to mention, because I knew she was a bowler, what she thought about pumpkin bowling. For all I knew, she'd be offended that it was, you know, uh, ruining her sport. But she said, she, she said she'd help and help me find out, you know, the best way to set it up and how many times you, use, like, would each person do a string of, um, no, a frame? Frame. Would they do three pumpkins, or would they do... And there are people who really want to um, have this be at all levels so that really good bowlers can stay in the competition and we'll end up with some scores mm -hmm. and we can award some prizes and maybe a lot, some, have some fun too. But I need, um, I need a group or several groups that want to help support the bowling effort and we'd find a way for them to, um, to have to prof their, so say a Taekwondo club or a wrestling club or um, you know some other people about this tall 
that wouldn't mind resetting the pins. If you have two <coughs> people per alley, you can reset these pins really quickly, and it can be almost as quick as, you know, real bowling. So um, looking for some. I get <coughs> when I was 10 years old, my first job was I was a pin boy, duck pins, <laughs> sending them all up in the ladies' league. You get $5 a, I mean, five cents a, a frame. <coughs> Well, <laughs> there we go. We have our pricing structure. We have a, a mentor to teach everybody how to do it. But I would That's probably a riot. think what would be really good to ask is Keen High now has a bowling team. I just heard that, yep. um, Nancy Hickox said you need to get in touch with Keen High. So we're, we, we have to do that right away. And um, matter of fact, right after this show, we're going to do another show, and it's going to be with Leslie Farmer and Al Camille. Can you the, check on that for yep. me? The <laughs> athletic director and the principal of the high school. <laughs> So uh, we need to get you on the Pumpkin Festival team, Chris, <laughs> officially. <laughs> That's, that would be wonderful <coughs> if you asked them. And so we've got about a minute and a half, two minutes. Oh, let's see. What else do we absolutely have to talk about? One thing really quick that some of the people, because 98% of the people love the Pumpkin Fest, mm. and you may have 2% who really have some negative concerns about the safety of the Pumpkin Fest. <coughs> I know in the past you said no dogs. Right. But what no about dogs. the alcohol problems that what, you're working with the police to some of the Safety is the number one priority of the Pumpkin <coughs> Festival, and the, the people, Gary Lamro, number one, <coughs> sets a standard of safety. Every decision we make is based on safety. So if, if you're at the festival and someone says, I'm sorry, sir, but you can't do that, you can rest assured that the reason you can't do that is safety, whatever it is, whether it's a dog. And they, there have been, in, you, you just can't have dogs in a crowd like that. It's not good for the dog. It's not good for people and small fry. And so, um, and what about um, alcohol-induced misbehavior? You know <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I am like a dog with a bone on this topic. I, I think it's fun. I think yeah. alcohol has a wonderful place in life, but I think that the abuse of alcohol has no place at the Pumpkin Festival. So we're asking that we're asking kids 18 to 25 or young adults, they're definitely not kids, um, not to lose their head. Don't lose your head at Pumpkin Festival. Have a ball, pitch in, carve a pumpkin, bowl, but stop just short of losing your head and we can all have a great Pumpkin Festival. It, it's your community. Don't embarrass your community on the World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good, that, you're really good at this. Yeah, I agree. Because if you're going to act stupid, someone's going to YouTube you, and that you don't want to see mom and dad watching the pumpkin fest and watching you doing something stupid. Right. Well, none of it. That's just yeah. the wrong side. It's the wrong signal to send. And if it, it, like you said before, <laughs> ratio-wise, the the excellent behavior of all people at the Pumpkin Festival and 18 to 25 year olds is way up there in the good, mm. good conduct. Um, but you, you know, too much alcohol is too much alcohol. So let's just stop doing that. Let's stop right short of losing our heads. And one quick thing is, what is the Pumpkin Fest going to be doing this Friday compared to other Fridays? Oh, the October 21st? Yep. It's doing exactly what we do in Keene, New Hampshire every Friday. Uh, 52 other Fridays, no, <laughs> 51 other Fridays a year. It's being the most enchanting, welcoming, lovely New England town. And, and there'll be some pumpkins from school kids and businesses, but there are no official pumpkin festival events, just beautiful Keene. Okay, time went real quick. See, it wasn't it that did. bad. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you, Chris. And so I won't say I'll see you on the long road, but I'll see you on the Pumpkin Fest. And make sure you bring a pumpkin and wear orange. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lane Hotel in downtown Keene, New Hampshire. I'm Ruth Sterling, Sterling Design and Communications Event Managers of Pumpkin Festival 2011 in Keene. <laughs> Welcome. With me here today are two mayors, the mayor of Highwood, Illinois, Charlie Picaro, if you'd stand for a moment. Say hi to Charlie Picaro from Highwood, Illinois, and our own mayor, Dale Pridget, Keene, New Hampshire. Also joining uh, the Highwood contingent is Eric Fallberg. Uh, Alderman, Highwood, Illinois.
troublemaker. Yes, yes, yes. And beside him, the ultimate troublemaker, Nancy Sporborg, visionary creator of Keen Pumpkin Festival. Each of these people has some remarks for you today, and I'm going to let them take it from here. We'll have questions at the end from the press. Thank you. I think just to get everyone into the mood, I would like to say that this was a present from Mayor Picaro. It's also, not only does that, it has a little flashing light in it, so anyway, I may wear this to the next city council meeting. I'm sure that all the city councils are here. Uh, it would be great. Uh, but first of all, let me thank everybody for being here today. We really appreciate it, the staff, city councilors, all the guests that are here. Mayor Picaro, it's my pleasure to invite you to Keene. Oh, thank you. Eric. Nancy and everybody. We had a wonderful earlier today. We had a meeting, we had lunch, and it was great. Uh, we heard all of the pros and cons of Pumpkin Fest and why you can make them better and how you can make them worse and how you can have all kinds of different things that would happen. So, but we had, we had a grand time, we really did. And uh, today it really is my pleasure to just kind of talk a little bit about the Pumpkin Fest. And in a way, I'm going to challenge because there's a couple things that I think really works. And, and one of my challenges is for you and for Eric to take back uh, to your hometown is to simply remember that it's, it's a wonderful community event. And to hold the, the joy that you get from it really very, very close to all of you. And I know you mentioned how much your children enjoyed being there and all of us who had children and grandchildren who go because it really is something that carries in memories and I get emails uh, when there was a talk that maybe we were not going to have a, a pumpkin fest this year I cannot believe how many emails I got from Maryland Pennsylvania all over the place and people said they were going to plan their visits to New Hampshire so it's a wonderful thing and it's a it's something that will grow with you now being a true native that I am here in Keene New Hampshire I've seen this pumpkin fest grow and Nancy was telling us about the first time that she had this and they had 600 pumpkins and if some of you remember when we had 27,000 pumpkins and so on and one of her great stories is and I don't know if you were going to tell you a story about what you did with the pumpkins but you know after the first pumpkin fest was over they didn't know what they were going to do with 600 pumpkins they had forgotten to make plans to have them picked up or taken away so they ran across the street to the church at the head of the square put them in the, in the vestibule of the church and then they had to take them out the next morning because it was going to be church and all the people complained about the smell of the pumpkin. But, it was, it, but it's typical things like that, that, the stories that you'll tell as you go on and you'll tell your kids and your grandkids and people will be part of them. So that's great. So hold those close to your heart, Charlie. They're, they're wonderful and you will find that it will bring a community together. It will give everybody in the community the joy that they look for every time that they come to a pumpkin fest, whether it's here or there. So I wish you well with that. I would like to issue a little bit of a challenge or offer a small challenge, and I know you've come here to challenge we're, me. We're up for the challenge. Oh. All right. But I have two things, I guess, that I would like to do. And most of you can see this wonderful, wonderful, great trophy that we have here today. And I'll let you all <laughs> this, has been, this has been donated by, by the uh, Let It Shine group and the Ruth Sterling and, and brought this in and said that if you win, we will ship this to you. But only in that case. And also, the other thing is, is, is if, it really, if we really come down to very important things, I will donate my tie to a cause sure? out there. I will do that so that you can do that. But I wish you well. I enjoy having you here. Everybody is uh, looking forward to our pumpkin fest, yours, and to stay in contact with what Absolutely. happens. And I wish you well, child. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. It is evening, right? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Mayor Bridget. Thank you for having us this afternoon. Ruth, wonderful. Nancy. Paula, thank you so much for your hospitality. Um, it was absolutely wonderful. And if I could uh, just mention to, we're hoping, uh, a City of Highwood right now, we have a festival, a market fest every evening, and this will be played there. And if the cameraman would be so kind, if you could just show our hometown how intimidating it is to be here this afternoon. Okay, we have two years of doing this. I want to just look at the banners. World record 1992. 
World record 1993. <laughs> 94. We skipped away. I feel like I remember, what is it, the Boston Celtic Stadium here? <laughs> <laughs> Chicago Bulls have six, I think it is, and this yes. is a little more than that. All the way to uh, this one over here. World record 2011, question mark. Mayor Pregent? <laughs> I'm ready. Nancy? Yes. Eric and I here are only for one reason and one reason only. Now it's two reasons, right? Well, we First, the trophy. I think there's three reasons. What's the third? Well, yeah. I just wanted to come here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think what I would try to say is the history here is so rich, and the community is mentioned. Every time you say the word Pumpkin Fest, the community is mentioned. Children are mentioned. And we're in a small town of 5,000 people in Illinois. Um, and we both have very young families, and that's the whole reason we want to do something like this. So when our children get a little older, they can talk about it, memories, and just hearing your stories, your first 600 pumpkins, meeting multiple presidents. It's amazing, the history that is here, and it is quite humbling, um, and it is quite energizing this, at the same time to see if we can actually uh, not just come close, <laughs> but come close, and, and, and hopefully, if weather permits, because you know it's a weather thing, uh, come together as a community and give you a run for your money. So, without him, without, I'd like to introduce Alderman Falberg, who I know has a couple challenges in mind. Oh, I thought you were a challenge. Oh no! Well, what are we? What are we offering here from Highwood? We have a whole bunch of stuff that I know we came up with on the way. Lots of food. Lots of food. <laughs> we are a small Italian community full of restaurants. Uh, so come on up here. Say hello to our neighbors out in Highwood. Hi, Gene. If we do lose, and that's big enough, we will be shipping a boatload of food from Highwood. And if you know about Highwood, which you probably don't, <laughs> but you will. It is known for its restaurants, its bakeries, and uh, there's a reason why we have a garlic fest there and a Bloody Mary fest. <laughs> we, we like to have a good time, and we we're we're small, but we try to fit as many restaurants and food establishments in the small areas we can. Um, but they're phenomenal, and uh, even if we lose, it's it's a great win for us because then you get a taste of Highwood, and you get to see what we see. Um, I learned about the Keen Pumpkin Festival when I had an inn in Vermont. I was at Snow Goose Inn in West Oak, Vermont, a mile south of Mount Snow. Are they charging you for that? Are you paying? Are they, uh, they should. They should. Yeah. They should. Yeah. Great rooms, by the way. Five places in the evening. <laughs> Wine and cheese in the evening. Um, and it was funny because I was sitting there making breakfast, uh, our famous uh, maple glazed bacon. <laughs> and Colette, who was from England, was helping. She was serving. She had married someone local. And she says, you know what? You have to go to this place, Keen. They do these pumpkins, and they're all over the place. They're all lit up. I'm like, what are you talking about? Who's going to go see pumpkins? I said, you know what, we'll go. So we went the next year. And uh, it, it's something that's just etched in your memory for life. So we're sitting there in Highwood, Illinois, fast forward 12 years later, and uh, uh, wonderful people that were, uh, we were working with, uh, they wanted to do a harvest festival. I'm like, what do you do at a harvest festival? Who's going to come for that? What are we harvesting? We don't have anything to harvest in the highwood. I mean, yeah, we can harvest the vent. It's very good. Um, I said there's this incredible festival that you cannot imagine what it was like. Uh, pumpkin Fest. Yes, Nancy, I have you to blame. We decided, okay, we'll, we'll try it. I, they, they still don't understand what it was. I said, well, let's do a sampling. So we did the prelude to the Great Highwood Pumpkin Festival. And we built a miniature team. Because the funny thing was, that night, we had people walking out of a restaurant who were from Keen. <laughs> and they said, oh my god, this is a little keen. <laughs> I said, that's the greatest compliment someone's ever paid us. Thank you. So, that, that year we did 3,000 pumpkins on a, on a giant wall. We had, the nice thing in Chicago, we had a lot of press. WGN was there, ABC, NBC. They're like, oh, they've never seen this before. I said, well, you need to go to New Hampshire. 
Um, well, we said, okay, now you know what it's like. We're going to go for the big time. We're going we're gonna to do it. And people still thought we were nuts. I mean, we still are. I mean, we're throwing a giant pumpkin festival. Uh, so we went for it. Last year, we did 26,287. So we did quite a lot, right? Not bad. Second year. Not bad. We figured, okay, now we have to. Uh, we're sitting down. Now we got a challenge. A real challenge. <laughs> because we're both we're both etched in community. We live uh, for our kids and our, our families, and, and to create a, a a life and 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 to see something that you never forget. And anybody who's experienced the pumpkin festival never forgets. They tell everybody. And we had that happen. The emails, Facebook, as you know, is all over the place. You see how happy people were. They were taking pictures of the one pumpkin, 50 pumpkins, thousands of pumpkins. They were just doing it. And I felt keen, almost a kinship to them, and we felt like it was a sister city. And we're hoping that Keene will ultimately become a sister city of Highway. Uh, and because it's more than just pumpkins. Pumpkins are what bring people, they bring them together, and we're looking forward to challenging, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to uh, having this in Highway. <laughs> <laughs> we, I guess, so formally, because we are the challengers. We are the challengers. You know what? You guys are phenomenal. And just to be in this in the same room as you and being acknowledged with you is a privilege. Uh, and we we honor this. And we're looking forward to not only this year, it's as you said, it's bigger than the Guinness. It's now community. It is. And it's it's a fight amongst communities in the friendliest sense that you can imagine. And uh, uh, we're creating a new event, Pumpkin Dodgeball, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, we, we've had a sister city in uh, Einbeck, Germany for quite some time, and that's worked out. We've had a wonderful time, and people go to Germany and visit, and they come over here, and they send soccer teams and so on. Maybe we can work out something where maybe we can exchange, you know, the best pumpkin or the, whatever it is, or the most gaudy, whatever it is, maybe we, got we can do ball. something like that. But it will be wonderful. <laughs> we accept your challenge, and it's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So I'm Nancy Sporborg, and I started the festival in 1991. That's and a round of applause. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Gandhi says, be the change you want to see in the world. That's why we're accepting this challenge. That's why it's important. We welcome challenges. We welcome Highwood coming and challenging us. And we do that because this, is, this idea is it's not mine. It's not even Keene's to hold. It's ours to share. That's where the magic is. The magic is in the sharing. So by accepting the challenge, we recognize that Keen may not always hold the world record, but you guys, we don't hold it now. So we know what that's all about, right? Boston holds the record. So, yeah, Boston's record, three th Boston's record is 30,128 in 2006. So we recognize by accepting the challenge the Keen may not always hold the world record, and that's okay. By welcoming the competition, we invite the world to discover what we already know in Keen, New Hampshire, and that is that there's magic in participation. The more pumpkin festivals there are in the world, the better our world will be. I'm really, really clear about that. So the ultimate purpose of Pumpkin Festival isn't really about the world record. You know, when I was running the festival, people would say to me, Nancy, it's getting too big, it's too big, don't do the world record anymore. And I just could never quite wrap my arms around that because by, setting a, by trying to set a world record, 
we invite everybody to be a part of the magic. It means that their pumpkin matters. They count. Their pumpkin counts, they matter. And if we weren't going for a world record, it wouldn't have the same impact. So I've always felt that the world record was a really important piece. But it's not about the record, right? And it's not about money. Those are byproducts. What it's really all about is community participation. And that by all of our community coming together for a common good, we create magic in this community. And every single person who's ever been to a pumpkin festival, including the people from Highwood, feel the magic the second they walk into that, that festival. It's pretty incredible. So that's the change that we want to see in the world. That's what Keen's doing. That's why going for a record is important. And that's why we're honored to accept the challenge from Highwood. Thank you. So, thank you. I was about 5,000 people large. Uh, we have surrounding communities of 30,000 just south of us, 23,000 just north of us in Highland Park and Lake Forest. Uh, the city of Chicago is about 28 miles south of us. We had, did I happen to mention we have a train that goes right through town from downtown Chicago? It's called the New Pumpkin Express. Did I fail to mention that? Yeah. <laughs> Three trips up and down. <laughs> Where's our city manager? Did you tell him that we've got the pumpkin trucks coming in and the long line? I haven't told anybody yet. We did hear about this train, and the first thing I said was, I think we need a train. Ah. Come on, questions, questions. Yeah, I, I'll, Question? I'll, oh, I got one. Oh, uh, so Kyle Jarvis from the Keen Sentinel. Uh, I'm wondering, um, obviously, you guys talk about how you modeled uh, your festival on the Keen Festival. When did you sort of uh, get the idea about coming here and posing the challenge? How did that come to be? That, that's, when, what, 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 what did Oh, I have a story about that, but I'm oh. <laughs> You probably know the day exactly, but um, <laughs> she was stuck in traffic. <laughs> it was a very bad day for yeah. Very bad day for a good day for us. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it was, a few, it was a few months ago. July? Yeah, July. It was the summertime. Um, it, it, I, we were looking at the world record, and uh, you know, people kept on talking about the world record, you know, just like what Nancy was saying. And, and you try to make it that it, you know, it's really more than that. And I said the only way we could really show that is if we challenge Keen. You know the originator because we need to show people that Highwood, you know, is not the only one who does this. Uh, you know, in the Midwest, they don't. Sometimes we don't see outside. Um, it's the mountains, I guess. Yes, it's the mountains. <laughs> exactly. But um, I, I really needed to show people. Uh, we really need to show people in Highwood uh, what it's truly about. And uh, so we, I looked online. And uh, unfortunately for Ruth, uh, her name was smack in the middle, and her phone number was right there. So I made a phone call. And uh, shockingly, she called me back. <laughs> she was stuck in traffic. She had nowhere to go. She said, you know, I'm just going to call this guy back. And I think I should let her finish that story, because it's quite a it's quite well, We can tell it together, Eric. <laughs> Okay, so for all of you who try to reach me by phone, you know it's a real rarity for me to return a phone call. I, I just, phone is not my thing. I'm an email kind of person, can keep track of the calls and things. But this fellow, there's something a little irresistible about this fellow. It's he's, my hair. <laughs> he's just uh, got this spirit. He's got the spirit of the pumpkin festival in him. He understands what it's about, and, you know, we've had a steep, learning curve as the new organizers of the Keene Pumpkin Festival, and every day is not a cheery, sunny day in the life of uh, the new organizers of the Keene Pumpkin Festival. 
And when someone from how many miles away? Like 1,500 miles away tells me that you're sitting on one of the coolest things he knows about in his whole, you know, that's, there's something about that. It gives you that aesthetic distance from which to view yourself and say, hey, you know what? Those people in Keene are nuts. <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever, and he's right. And what he has is this contagious, wonderful spirit that came through the phone, and I, I've been calling him. Still have it? Um, trouble. He's trouble because I had said from the beginning, no world record this year. This year we get our feet under us, we figure it all out, we streamline processes, we make improvements, no hoopla, no world record, and then this guy talks to me on the phone and all of a sudden I hear myself saying, you're kind of irresistible, you know, and and then he, he just had a great answer for every question and wanted to come to Keene. And we need those tourism dollars. And <laughs> 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 yeah, we know, you know, the, the great thing is I think we're both going to beat the world record this year. That's right. And you, I did the greatest thing ever. I mean, you never know, could be a top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe. What I said, I said, well, I said 90,000 to him last year, and actually people took me literally, which is pretty scary. So. Are you ready for another question? Yes, Brad. Actually, I do have one. Um, just want to clarify what the stakes are here. If we win, we get a bunch of food. If they win, they get this trophy. This wonderful. <laughs> Wouldn't you like one of these, really? Yeah, but the <laughs> Can we get like you some know, one food? Of the things that happens is if you get if, if we get the food, see that's gone shortly. I mean, we eat it, and it's gone. They could have this forever. All right, so we win it back. That's right. Yeah, we win it back in the next year. Mayor, are you sending a COD? <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> we we've co we covered that a lot. <laughs> Actually, um, I would welcome suggestions from the Monadnock region on what we want when we win. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to when? taste their food tonight. What restaurant? Your favorite restaurant? I, actually, my, well, my favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant is the stage and no, they're not paying me. Um, <laughs> the, I, I, I was reluctant to accept this challenge because I have to admit I am not a good loser. If we don't win, all out win, I'm going to have to have a, a real talking to with myself about what it feels like <laughs> to... Um, have taken this over from the great center stage organization and fought, you know, coming through from Nancy Sporber and to be the new organizers. John, would you like to answer this question, how you'd feel if we're, if we take it on and we lose? Uh, You're not I, a good loser I, either, no, right? <laughs> we're bad losers. I can't imagine there, it. There's a real reason why she accepted <laughs> the challenge, because she knew we were Cub fans and we're used to being lovable losers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were Red, Red Sox fans, so we... <laughs> We knew how to lose, and we found out that winning feels a whole lot better. <laughs> but the, um, the bottom line of the Pumpkin Festival, as Nancy keeps telling us and reminding us, is not the numbers, it's not the world record, it's the feeling of accomplishing something you never dreamed you could. And for all of you who uh, look at those towers in the off-season and say, look at that incredibly beautiful thing, and for all of you who remember just how hard it was to build them and to clean up afterwards and to keep those 18 to 25-year-olds in control, Man, I, I, they think it's worth it. And through their eyes, I think it's worth it. Do we think it's yeah. worth it? Yes, we do. And yeah. we want to keep that trophy because I've grown very fond of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, does anybody else have, oh, what is the date of your <laughs> uh, the date is actually, we do the 19th to the 22nd because we like to just celebrate for a longer period of time. Uh, but. We moved our time for announcing an hour earlier, so we will be announcing at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, while you announce at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So it'll be the same, so it'll be the same exact time. Uh, we're going to try to work it where we have live streaming. If someone has a contact at Best Buy, <laughs> I think they should sponsor the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, we, we want to announce pretty much at the same time, and I, I think it will be great exciting. I, but I think it's a challenge we have to announce first, don't we? You can make that decision. Yeah, but you don't have to decide right now. I'll give you a clue. I have another question. Do we get a handicap because of possible loss of 
pumpkins in the flood? Did he <laughs> <laughs> in the flood, plural? Uh, lost the pumpkins. Uh, uh, you didn't catch them as they were going down the river? <laughs> that was bad. We have a report from our pumpkin provider that the pumpkins are safe, that Keene's pumpkins are okay. So, so um, I, I mean, I'm surprised myself, but I think our pumpkins are okay. I gotta go check on that though. <laughs> um, so, would you? I would, yeah, I would love to have my mayor thank, thank everyone for coming. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. And as I mentioned. Uh, Visitors, city councilors, city employees, and all the guests that we have here today. Thank you so much. And I hope that you all stay in touch here with, with uh, Ruth and with all of us so that we can keep you updated if you have any other questions in regard to the, uh, where we're standing with the, the challenge and from their challenge. And uh, I hope to see you all at the Pumpkin Fest. With pumpkins. With pumpkins. <laughs> Bring your pumpkin. Yeah, okay. let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we got, yeah, we're well we're going to start right here. Get almost as many as the first one. Thank you so very, very much for being part of this wonderful, challenging day. Thank you.